Hey everyone, my name is Chris and I'm a Surgical Service Registrar and today I wanted to talk to you about the tactics and strategies that I used to pass the RAC's General Surgical Science exam on my first run through. Now this exam can feel like a massive hurdle and even just a cursory look at the scope of what's involved in preparing for this can seem really intimidating and insurmountable. But the most important thing to keep in mind is that however insurmountable it might seem, there are ways to break it down to make each component more manageable so that you're prepared for the big day. Okay, so step one is priority mapping. That is looking at the structure of the exam and the distribution of marks to identify what study is going to yield the highest return on the day that you're sitting the exam. The thing to keep in mind is that RACs publish the distribution of marks given to each area of study prior to the day. And so it's critical that you look at this before you organize your study so that you prioritize the correct areas. For example, CNS anatomy is often worth a lot less marks than thoracic anatomy is. And so by looking at this before the day, you can get an idea of which areas of regional anatomy, which areas of physiology and which areas of pathology are gonna return the highest yield for the hours that you put into them. The efficiency that you gain in this simple step is really difficult to overstate. And so I'd encourage you before you start your preparation to have a look at that and map out your study accordingly. Step two is resource building. A lot of people have different ideas about what the best resources are for each individual area. And if you're interested, I'll put the ones that I use in the description below. But the most important thing is to make sure that you have a variety of types of resources. If you're only using textbooks, it can be really hard to stay motivated and to maintain momentum while you're studying. So instead what I did was try and find a diversity of mediums that I could use so that if I was covering a particular area, then I could continue on through three or four hours worth of study, but using different uh, mediums to focus on that same area. So to give an example, let's talk about anatomy. For anatomy, I used Last's 9th edition anatomy, which is the recommended textbook from Rax, and then I would use the Rowan's Color Atlas of anatomy with the chapter that I was reading. And then once I'd finished reading the chapter or reading a part of the chapter, I would then go to Ackland's videos on that area of anatomy and I would watch them. And then after I'd watch them, I'd move on to some flashcards, which I'd then work through that were focused on the same area. And I could take a session that may have been half an hour worth of focus reading a textbook chapter or even an hour and push it out to three or four hours on the same area covering the same material, but in different ways. And from a memory point of view, I found that that helped me one, to retain the information better because I could link the concepts between a multitude of mediums, but it also just made it easier to focus so that I wasn't constantly catching myself, not understanding the text that I was reading or slowing down as I was getting toward the end of a chapter. Step three is to structure your study, covering all of the topics that you need to and doing it in a random way it just simply isn't efficient and leaves you vulnerable to missing sections that you need to work through. And how you structure your study is a really debated question and different things are going to work for different people. For me, what was effective was breaking it down according to regional anatomy and then studying the pathology and the physiology that best related to that particular region. Now, obviously, there were going to be some topics that were missed out in that, and so I would cover those separately. But I found that using a regional structure helped me to be comprehensive in the way that I covered the material, but also to link key concepts to the anatomy that I was studying such that it was easier to remember the physiology and the pathology that applied to them. I don't have a good argument as to why that's the best way to do it necessarily, but it worked for me, so I wanted to share it with you. The other thing that I did was while I was doing that structured approach, I would use the question bank, which is provided by the College of Surgeons, to work through random questions and practice one, the format of the question so that I was used to it by the day, time the day came, but two, it allowed me to cover some random topics within each study session that helped me to map out which areas I was doing well in and which areas I wasn't doing well in. And then by using my previously established prioritization, I could then map out which areas I wanted to cover next or revisit at an earlier stage than maybe I had anticipated. And so it helped me to, in real time, track where I was up to with my preparation. Step four is to get the timing right. An exam like this takes about six months worth of preparation. For some people it may be a little bit longer, for some people it may be a bit shorter, but for me it was about that long. So what that means is organising your rotations or your work and your holidays in such a way as it's going to give you the most amount of time possible to prepare for the exam. For me what that meant was sitting the exam in January, February, which I knew was going to be after the Christmas holidays where most surgical departments tend to slow down and so I could guarantee I'd get home a little earlier in the evening to prepare for the exam. Additionally, I mapped out my holidays well in advance so that I took weeks at a time at sort of key intervals within my study. So I had two weeks off before the exam itself, but then I also had a week off at different intervals during my preparation. So I could have some focused sessions where I knew for seven days I could just hit subjects in a maximally efficient way and then prepare myself for another couple of months of more relaxed evening study. 
My final tip is a little specific, but I think it's important to mention because I think that a lot of people who sit the exam just aren't aware of it. And that is that the Editorial and Examinations Committee of the Board of Examiners of RACS published a book in the 1990s on the GSSE. The book is called Multiple Choice Questions in Basic Surgical Sciences by Anthony Buzzard and it was published with a view to explaining the nature of the questions that would be used in the GSSE and it also includes three practice papers that have fully worked answers in them that have been written by people who were targeting it specifically at the College of Surgeons. Not only does it talk about the way that the questions are broken down and the rationale for why they're broken down in that way, but it also gives examples of exactly how those questions should be thought about and the way in which answers can be differentiated and how someone should approach answering a question in this particular way. The advantage of having seen that is that it makes you look at the multiple choice questions in a different way and it means that when you're preparing for the questions you also prepare in a slightly different way too. Now in terms of the content that's included in it from a knowledge base it's a little out of date now but it's worth its weight in gold to anyone who's looking to establish how the exams are constructed and why they're constructed in the way that they are and I really just can't recommend it highly enough to anyone preparing for this exam. Okay everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you find it helpful. And if you did, then please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you've got any suggestions of your own for people who are gonna sit this exam that you found helpful, then please put them in the comments below so that we can all share in that benefit. And until next time, enjoy the work.